Welcome to another OCD Recovery YouTube video. I'm going to be talking a little bit about unconditional self-acceptance, acceptance in general, and why it's so misunderstood, but it is so vital for OCD recovery. Well, the reason being, think about some fear that you had in the past. Like, let me take, for example, a certain fear I had of some health thing, some disease or something like that. Once I got over that through exposures, changing my relationship with, uh, the, with, with, changing my irrational beliefs that are associated with that, that no longer bothered me. For a while after that, I got a few setbacks, I was still scared, but then it no longer bothered me at all. I don't need to do three or four different meditations a day and mindfulness each day to make sure that I'm grounded so that doesn't come back. I don't need to do anything. I just needed to work on changing my beliefs so that I was no longer terrified of that scenario, okay? So therefore, it no longer bites me, it no longer grabs me, it lo no longer latches and catches me. Now that doesn't mean the goal is to become completely fearless. Once I'd taken the edge off that, it released, I could see, ah, that's not as terrifying as I imagine, right? Now, with those fears that have been latched for a long time, that haven't reduced, and they're causing you a problem. They might be making you avoid everything or making you very locked up around that. Say you had a particular fear of HIV that might be affecting your sex life because you're worried about contracting it, right? No amount of thoughts are thoughts, leave thoughts there, change your relationship with thoughts is gonna change that locked up body language around it. Why? Because you're still way too scared of it. So we have to reduce it. So, so when you see these things that sometimes people sound like you don't need to go into the content of a thought. Yes, in the general sense, we don't need to go into the content of a thought. In the general sense, we don't, right? We leave thoughts there. A normal, so-called normal human walking down the street is walking down the street and they are not thinking 24-7, what do I do with this thought? What do I do with that thought? Why am I having this thought? Why am I having that thought? They just go walking down the street, right? And that's the same with all our thoughts. We leave them there, we don't get involved in them. But if there's a fear that's been latched and you've got chronic guilt and chronic anxiety latched for so long, you're gonna need to go into it. That's why we have exposures. We have exposures to get into the content of there, of the fear, and break that down so we're no longer scared. So when we're doing an exposure, we are feeling the sensations, the fear, and so on, and then it comes down. We're dropping the compulsions, we're dropping the checking and the chasing, and we're getting more comfortable with the feared scenario. That is absolutely key to OCD recovery, but missed so much. What benefits would we get from unconditional self-acceptance? Learning to see that we don't need X, Y, Z to be happy. Learning to see that we can accept ourselves even if we make a mistake. Learning to see that we can be, uh, we can we live our life on our terms and not be concerned about what other people think. Are other people gonna judge us? Are other people gonna look down on us? Are we gonna have a bad reaction from, as if someone looks us sort of shamefully, is that gonna be the end of our world? And then when we do that and we start breaking these things down, we realize things aren't as scary and we have this freedom. It's an incredibly liberating experience because then we are able to go through life without trying to escape chronic anxiety and chronic guilt and need to do loads of things all the time to keep ourselves propped up because our beliefs have changed which shape the lens of how we see the world, see our life. These are skills for life, not just for OCD. When I'm working with people for OCD, I'm looking at changing their relationship with life, looking at changing their perspectives on life so they can move towards their goals, but now they've got a robust recovery. They're not being swayed left and right by chronic guilt and chronic anxiety. Sure, we're gonna have setbacks. Sure, it's gonna be a bumpy ro roller coaster ride along the way with emotions coming along for the ride with us. Of course, that's the, the process of what happens. But as we learn to get better, deeper acceptance, we don't have that, oh, I need someone's approval. Oh, if that happened, that'd be too scared. I wouldn't even be able to stand it. I need to really shape my life around that. Anything but that fear, I can't that fear. And we look at the core fears associated with the things we're scared of, which with all these fears, POCD, harm OCD, real event OCD, it's all at the core, fear of rejection, fear of doing something that means you can't then have the goals that you want in life, fear of being separated from your friends and family, 
Fear of doing something that's so bad that would make you a so-called bad person, which Nick broke down in a great video a couple of days ago on why there's no such thing as a bad person. Now, there's plenty of videos on this channel covering unconditional self-acceptance, unconditional life acceptance. If you just scroll through the channel, you can see those, and they all relate to what I'm talking about today. And in the world of OCD today, you see so many things that are very helpful and so many things that's complete nonsense, right? We know that you can't just tell yourself thoughts are thoughts. If it was that simple, our Facebook group would have about 10 members. The reason is, is because we know that it's not as simple. We know when we're still experiencing a really bumpy ride of chronic anxiety and chronic guilt all the way along the way. So we know that. We know that we need to work on improving our beliefs because it's keeping us stuck. We are aware of that. We see that. We, we live this experience day to day knowing what that feels like to be sort of internally bound by chronic anxiety and chronic guilt pumping away 24-7. But we live in a world today where there is so much unhelpful information. Like if I looked up insomnia, advice on insomnia, most of the advice on insomnia would be go to bed earlier, get a hot bath, have a relaxing drink, don't use a computer, don't spend too long online. And that is then setting up this control. Oh my God, I've got to get sleep. I've got to get perfect sleep. And that's what's happening with the world. We're tracking devices and stuff for sleep. People are getting less sleep because they're so worried about sleep. That's the same as an article I read today in the, in the paper talking about the best way to get over anxiety with, with, with travel is to spend a lot more time packing earlier on, which becomes a massive compulsion. The person spending ages packing, fear I'm going to miss something, fear I'm going to get lost, because people don't understand anxiety in the sense of there's so much misleading information because it's not understood, specifically with OCD. With OCD, what people think is you can just approach it the same as you can mild just anxiety. You can't. It's very robust. It grips in there. It latches on. So you can't just reassure your way to recovery. Like you'll see countless posts saying just get comfortable with the anxiety sensations. Leave them there. That's all you need to do. Lots of deep breathing. Get comfortable with it. Trust me. I was breathing like Darth Vader for, for, for years because I was trying to get that internal breathing nice and calmed, all the sensations worn like an uncomfortable coat. But the coat was so uncomfortable because I had such strong beliefs that were fueling the cycle so hard. That's such a key part of the journey, wearing it like an uncomfortable coat. It's such a key part of the journey, letting the thoughts come in and go along as we're going through life. That's vital, but is by no means all of it. And you can just see, like, I can't believe it today when, I, when I'm looking on, online for, like, uh, different advice for, you know, in relation to the work I do and different things in relation to anxiety, and especially in insomnia and tinnitus. All the things you see with tinnitus, oh, put a sound device on to block out the sound when you're going to bed in your room. That's setting up the brain to avoiding. That's setting up the brain to being scared of that sound all the time. So because the brain is scared of that sound all the time, it's sending out a flag that that's dangerous, right? So that's why people are so scared with tinnitus and it feels so latched. Whereas instead, if they learn to wear the sound like an uncomfortable coat, as well as look at the belief as that the sound is not disrupting their whole life. They can still do everything and loads of the time they don't notice the sound because the brain obviously doesn't get flagged up through the limbic system. The situation with that is the less scared you get, you don't notice it. I have tinnitus and it caused me a lot of problem in the past. I used to go to clubs all the time and really loud music and, it, and I have tinnitus that's constant. I can't hear it at all because unless I sit here now and I'm in a quiet room, if I sit here now, I'll be able to hear it. But because my brain is not, because I'm not scared of it, it's tuned down. It's, it's not, I can't even hear it at all. It only becomes raised because it's like when I think, oh my God, has it got worse? Has it got, has it got worse? Has it got bad again? Has it, has it changed sound? And that's what used to happen all the time. And then I started looking and thinking about it all the time, all the time. And then it went 10 times the volume. It's the same as anxiety. When we're really scared of it, which we usually are a lot more scared of it than we think, we become scared of being scared, we try and fight off, scared of being chronically guilty, scared of never getting over OCD, and all these things continue for years and years and years in that cycle because of our relationship with it, as well as our beliefs about all the different things we fear. So I wanted to come on here and talk a little bit about that because it's such a key point that gets misinterpreted. With OCD, things get misinterpreted all the time because we tend to think that if something is difficult or it's not working right now, 
then it doesn't work or that I'm doing it wrong. So that's what we do, like all the way along the journey, I used to always think, oh, how do I accept? What is acceptance? Is it doing? Why am I not feeling that? Um, and just so many areas of that stuff. Oh my God, I'm still doing compulsions that I don't know about and what are they and I've got to find them and then that became a compulsion and all different variations of these things. And on this page, we cover that in a lot of detail. I mean, obviously there are compulsions that we can be doing that are keeping the cycle going mentally, but we're usually aware of those. And a lot of the automatic ones are because we're still scared of something. We're still frightened of something occurring, which is keeping that whole cycle going. Um, so I just wanted to raise a little bit of awareness of the most misunderstood part about OCD recovery that we do need to go into the content when it's been latched for a long time. And we know when we do, because if we're just feeling chronically anxious and chronic guilty all the time, we know that once we reduce that fear, we get peace. It's so obvious. It's been painted out by through philosophy for thousands of years. Uh, Kozipski, for example, said that, you know, God may forgive your sins, but I'm not talking about religion, but just to quote, God may forgive your sins, but your nervous system won't. And that relates exactly here. And all the work of Ellis's work that we cover on this page and philosophy and so on gets under that. Um, check out uh, the videos that we've done here on unconditional self-acceptance. If you just go on to the playlist acceptance, you'll see a lot of those. And that will help with today's video. So I'll be back on here tomorrow doing another video talking about, I think, more about the journey. Because I think it's so important to cover the OCD recovery journey in more detail. Because it gets missed so much, all the elements involved in that. And... I think I'll be doing that as well as going back into some themes, ROCD, POCD, HOCD, and so on, harm OCD, and how to get under those for relief from chronic anxiety and chronic guilt. Uh, guys, I will see you on the next YouTube video tomorrow. All right, guys, take it easy.